okay so uh let's get started right so <clears throat> since the the all talks like till till now that we have is all about the productivity of improving the uh, machine learning and improving the productivity of any other stuff that we do in our machine learning work or in, in any of the work or data engineering or data science work so this this effort is also in in that direction of improving the productivity for writing up a good level of machine learning uh, pipelines for your use cases so so let's say uh this this particular session is is a little theoretical to understand some of the frameworks and then we'll try to also implement it uh so maybe it will be a good practice like if you can also uh take all of this and do it side by side so that you can have a better understanding and better uh way to do the stuff in the right way so we'll we'll do it uh, we'll do the demo session at the last but and uh, but i will try to drive of the frameworks and let you understand how we can develop a good uh, machine learning pipelines uh, by using a framework called kedro and also if you have any question uh, we can have we can take it at the end of the session so so let's start with that so uh, let me first start with uh, the agenda for today so we are going to understand uh, a few things about uh, machine learning deployments and what are the challenges that we have in deploying the machine learning models from jupyter notebooks and then uh, what is kedro and why it is important to include kedro or any of the other framework that you would also would like to but kedro is one of the uh, framework that is being used by uh, industries so this is one of the thing that i will explore more and and give you a demo about it and there are also functionalities that kedro also provide with uh, integration with other products so we'll look into that and also we'll going to get a demo on on like at the end of the session so so that's an agenda for today's session so let's get started and so let's start with the challenging part that we generally face in deploying ml system so uh, there are various components as you know there are various components uh, in the ml uh, ml code or ml building a model machine learning building a model machine learning so like you want you have to prepare a feature engineering pipeline you have to pull up a data prepare a feature engineering pipeline do a data verification and then collect the data and then do what a ver- uh, versioning of the data and then uh, you will train a model and then you publish it somewhere and then you try to uh, do a predictions by putting in on some some service and try to get a uh, prediction from that service right and you see this this particular graphics uh, the ml code sits just uh, as, as a center of this but it's just a 10% of all the process that we talked about uh, so the, the majority of the process that involves is the 90% of the involves is the software engineering part that that anyone has to encounter the so ml work uh, is just 10% of all the product of of the ml system that you want to build up and uh, based all on the other sides of ml uh, components involved are configurations automations and feature engineering data verifications data collections and what not like there are multiple things that you have to track also here with the model and there are multiple things you have to write up on your own to make this ml code work automatically and establish this ml uh, as a software in your in your uh, in your production environment so when you try to package your ml model uh, in ter- in, ter- in terms in terms of software uh, it is very hard to process the things out uh, when you try to specifically use jupyter notebooks uh, so in jupyter notebooks you can do an experiment so uh, you can write up your codes and do all of your experiments or you can write it but you cannot build the right pipeline uh that that will take automatically that will automatically pull up your data in some some of a time of a day and then we'll try to feature it out automatically and then push it in the github or in the gitlab uh and then do a versioning of it and and and, and process it and save a model and then use that model for inferencing so that's a longer process that a particular uh ml process or ml life cycle involves and it is it is getting difficult to difficult uh, if you try to build up is if using a jupyter notebooks and so there is a problem uh and that there is also a challenge to to transfer this jupyter notebooks of work uh, from the experimental stage to the production engine stage right so this is the, so this transferability of the 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 code that we try to do it it takes a lot of effort and a lot of lot of time to to get it from the experimental stage to the production stage and we need we need a lot of uh, effort from the different engineers or uh, maybe emily or uh, data engineers to Uh, take a data scientist work and and write up a model code in a modular format and productionize it in the model so that effort is very very huge and it takes a lot of time like averagely it takes like 5 to 6 months to deliver a single product 
uh, a single ml model that you have built uh, six months back so it it's a long time to to uh, productize the model or uh, on your on, on the system that you're looking forward so to en- encounter that uh, uh, there is a solution uh, there's a framework called kedro and let me just first talk about what are the issues that uh, jupyter notebook picks up uh, that jupyter notebook has it so it is very difficult to version with using jupyter notebooks you cannot version the data you cannot version the codes you might need to have different tools to do it uh, and then you have to manage the pipelines so there are a different pipelines that you can make with notebooks and you have to also keep a track of your uh, the experiments that you are doing so you cannot track it in the notebooks uh, you, the code is not repositable so that means you cannot uh, share your notebooks to anyone uh, in in your in your uh, colleague with your colleagues so you cannot uh, do a, a rework of that particular uh, work that you did already and then you cannot debug it yeah, so there there's no debugging tool that is available like other other, other tools are available and then there is there's no auto test uh, tools available at uh, capabilities available for the jupyter notebooks and it takes consistent time to to get it from the experimental stage to the production stage so these are the problems that generally a jupyter notebook uh, training and the deploy, um, working with a jupyter notebook right so you want to productionize this uh, in a better way you want to modularize this code in a better way so uh, that's where the uh, the next uh, framework that comes into play that is kedro so this kedro is an open source uh, python framework which has been developed by the quantum black and it's a subsidiary company of uh, mckinsey and they were also being uh, struggling with this kind of issues like they have to develop this uh, machine learning models for their clients but eventually they wanted a, some something kind of uh, uh, model that can be packaged into a, a software stuff software stuff and then they can be that the particular software can be run in any of the systems that you're looking so it, it, without worrying about deploying the ml model and writing the same code to deploy that same model in different environments you can just package that particular model in a in a in a, a software kind of format and then you can run it and deploy it in any of the system that you're looking for maybe in a gcp aws or any other local systems so that's the flexibility that kedro offers and that led to build up the kedro framework from the quantum black and and it helps this kedro framework has a uh, step by step process or you can say a framework or structure that has been given by the kedro so you can write up your uh, you can you can bring up your all your codes from your jupyter notebook and write a modular code very easily uh, and it will significantly significantly reduce a lot of your time and effort in modularizing the code because you, ha- you will get a lo- uh, good structure and you can also version your data it can be scalable and you can deploy it in any, any of the framework so this kedro uh, framework we're going to help you in that session and there's a lot of effort that also required in writing a standard code so let's suppose uh, the data scientist teams uh, generally has a diverse background from from uh, whatever you see and then uh, each one of has has, has different uh, standards to work with the code uh, but this kedro provides a a, a significant uh, standardized structure of industries uh, of all the industrial practices so that every uh, data scientist or any other data engineer can go and incline towards this particular uh, framework and they can standardize all the codes uh, in the right industrial format so if you're if you're from any of the backgrounds you don't have to worry about it because you have a kedro to help you out in writing a good modular data science code uh, you can you can get rid of from jupyter notebook so as per the analytics many of our experiments remains in the jupyter notebooks but unfortunately it never get productionized so this tool can help us to productionize your uh, models in a better way and you can expect a cleaner code and good uh, standardized industrial code with the with the efficiency of producing the right production ready codes from 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 day one so that's a introduction from uh, uh, for the kedro and and uh, why it is helpful now let's go to the important stuff that uh, the kedro covers in, in its platform so there are a few capabilities that it ca- cap- uh, that it covers so one is project template so it give you a, a whole structure of a project project uh, in a right format that is standardized projects that you generally look into any of the standardized code uh, available on on for, for industrial use cases you might have seen github written in the better way like better standardized code right so that is a template that it provides and you can fill up all your uh, code in those templates and then you have a data catalog which is the most important uh, important capability of a kedro which drives all this important components that we have in our uh, kedro 
so data catalog is nothing but it is an input output layer that has been uh, that has been in house capability of a catro so maybe majorly we generally like write a code to load a data set so let's say today we want to import a csv data so we write a p dot read underscore csv right to to write it up a code but this these things are automatically handled by the catro so you, when you whenever you write to a catro project or when you write to a code in your catro you don't have to worry about the importing of any of your data and it will it will help you automatically import and load and save the data so that's a better flexibility and it will help you to write a cleaner code and save a model uh, or save a directories or save a uh, import important informations directly on your the required destination that you're looking for so this data catalog is a center core system that will help you to read and write and uh, store your data and models what not and you can also pre process your data by using this data catalog so it has a lot of uh, capabilities that a cadre provides and then there is another uh, uh, framework uh, internally build a framework which is we call it as a node and pipeline so we might all all are aware of the dax that we generally use uh, that is actually graphs right so so let's say once you have all your uh, pipelines ready your your data input and data feature, feature engineering and then model training and then evaluation of a model these are the pipelines that are generally ml cycle comprised right so you know you wanted to put it in a single pipeline flow so this is where the uh, nodes and the pipelines comes into play so you're going to formulate all of this uh, uh, pipelines into a dag and you convert into a dag and it it will not take you like lots of code it's just a single line of code a uh, single line of import of function that you're going to do it and you just prepare a dag for all this pipeline and you're going to combine all of this uh, sim- simple nodes into a single pipeline and that's it uh, so this this data flow of structures or this this whole pipeline will going to be created in in just in this like 5 to 6 minutes if you have all the codes ready so this is the uh, flow that catro provides you and then you can run all of your pipeline in a in a modular format now you don't have to worry about writing a pipeline in in some significant format that you want to be using it earlier and then uh, so basically you're converting your all the uh, functions and everything in a pipeline format so this is what i would summarize it here and then there's a the extensibility like uh, let's suppose tomorrow you want to track uh, ml flow experiments right uh, you can use ml flow for tracking experiments you want to track uh, your uh, uh, you want to track your data or uh, version your data and then you also want to look up your tensor boards uh, for your training for training and uh, understanding your each and every box for your model training right so so there are a lot of uh, extensions that are available with catro and uh, you can also build your docker image uh, from catro so you don't have to write and worry about it, writing a docker file uh, it's just a single command that will help you to write up your uh, docker file and it will just help you to build up a docker image in just a, in just a single line of code and so once you have this pipeline right you can just after this pipeline build up you can just write a single line, line of command say like code to to make up your airflow uh, dags to make up your uh, uh, cube cube flow ta- dags you can also prepare your uh, uh vertex ai pipelines you can also prepare your uh, uh, docker files you can also uh, build up your docker images so it's just a single line of command that can help you to build all of your all of the all of these things uh, in a single line of command and that's the flexibility that catro provides so it, it's going to package all of the things and then at the end you can deploy that catro in any of the environment that you're looking for so with that said uh let's see uh, where this, where does this catro fits into the ml ml uh, life cycle so you can see there's a is uh, a high overview of a machine learning life cycle uh we have where we have in just a raw data set clean and pre processed data set feature engineer train and evaluate the model and then finally we deploy it with using airflow uh, or uh, we also use the vertex ai pipelines or kubernetes right so so the main part that uh, that the thing that that is a pain for any of the uh, team is is this part the 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 pipeline creation for all the steps and to automate all of the steps right this is where the catro is uh, coming up and this will help you to productionize the model in a better and a, a much efficient way and it will help us to clean up the, all of the codes write up the, all the format and productionize in the right standardized format so this is where the catro will help it can also help in this format uh, to to write up your uh, uh, dax or your airflow or your vertex pipelines or if you want to deploy it on by using kubeflow you can also write a, a kubeflow dax and so this is what uh, the catro can also help in the deployment part so 
so these are the extensibles uh, that I talked about. Uh, you can use it uh, to to take up your pipelines from here to the deployment part also, which is automatic. You don't have to write. You don't have to worry about the things about uh, writing your uh, airflow tags or uh, about the pipelines. So as soon as you start running your Cadro, once you install your uh, Cadro components and you install your library for uh, Cadro, then you gonna initiate the Cadro pipeline. So once you initiate it, you're gonna see a directory that will generate something like this. So you, you might be having uh, the project directory name. So let's say you want to have a project name uh, X Y Z. So that will be the directory, and then you gonna get a list of directories to set up your project. Uh, this is a very standard way of writing any of the. Uh, software engineering uh, codes. So we are going to use the same software engineering principles to write our all data science codes in this. So this is a configuration folder which will have all the configuration files in the form of YAML. And then this is a data folder that you can take up and feed up your own li local data. Right now we are just using a, a local data to feed up and do the uh, inputs and outputs, right? So you can use that this data folder to store your local data project. And then there's a docs. You are you can maintain a docs about your projects. And this is a notebooks where you can place all your Jupyter notebooks and what are the components that you use for your preparation of the model pipeline, right? So you can add up your notebooks. And this is the project uh, uh, files that are required to set up your uh, project in in any of the configuration folders. And this is a little uh, advanced level, so we might not go into this. But these are like uh, for for testing up and for setting up different kind of configurations for your own kind of projects. And this is a source folder where all of your project source codes will be there, like all the pipelines and all the codes that you are going to build up for your model. So this is a directory that gonna be initiated once you start doing the uh, your Cadro project. And then you're gonna see your data catalog after that, right? So uh, this data catalog consists of multiple things. Uh, so this is catalog YML file, uh, which is there in the catalog. There is also catalog. Uh, there is also a logging YML file, and there is also parameter YML file. So there are actually three files. I'm showing one of them. So this catalog YML file is a core center. We talked about the data catalog, right? It's a core center for any of the reading input and output operations that we're gonna do. So in that sense, what I meant is uh, when you're gonna when when you generally write a code, you try to import the libraries or you want to import uh, the data set, right? By using pandas dot read underscore csv or pandas dot something, right? To read the files. But with this catalog YML, you don't have to write any of those boiler boiler uh, codes to in to read and write it and to save any of your model and save any of your data sets. So with this catalog YML, you're going to place an input or variables here in the YML file and then you're going to mention the type uh, pandas.parquet dataset. So this is coming from the uh, Cadro functionality. So Cadro has this built-in uh, data sets that are built in to read and write and save it for you. You can also customly build it, but I'm just using the available versions that are available to read and write the a data set and then you can have to mention the path where you're going to read it and you're going to write it. So this is the thing that catalog YML provides you, the reading of the data and saving of the data. And then there we have a node and the pipeline. So you might have uh, uh, you might have been doing a uh, reading of op operations, right? You want to be per performing a feature engineering operations and you might be performing some tasks on your data set, right? So those tasks are going to be included in, in a kind of functions, right? You generally try to prepare that filtration tasks or any of the pitching in tasks in a kind of a function. You want to add it up as function. So those tasks, small, small tasks that you generally try to do on data, it can be treated as a nodes. So this particular node, node.py will be getting created once you start uh, using Cadro, uh, you once you start generating a pipeline. So once you initiate a pipeline using Cadro, this nodes.py file will be generated and you have to move all your uh, uh, functions into this node file. So this signifies that these are the functions that it has to perform. These are tasks that it, it has to perform. Now, next step is to make this task in a sequential manner. manner. Like how you want to make this, uh, how you want to make this task to run in a uh, which manner? Like in in what in which in which order you want to place it? So that's where the pipeline comes into play. So there's another file will be generated with the node.py, uh, which will be pipeline.py file, which will which you want to use it to set up your nodes or to set up your task in a sequential order and that will generate as a pipeline and it will run as a pipeline. So you're going to see that there is a Cadro pipeline that, I, that we generally import and then this is the nodes uh, that we created, right? Uh, this, this is coming from the nodes.py file. I'm going to import all of your... Uh, sorry, uh, I can just go to that. 
plan. So, uh, so you're going to import all of your functions that you used uh, in the node.py file and then import it and then we'll set up a node and set up a, set up a pipeline to function that or to order that in a sequential manner and then you wrap it up with a pipeline. So that's how you define a, a functions and you try to run in that pipeline. And then I just want to bring a relationship between how this pipelines and the catalog.yml is written because ultimately you have to read and write the operations, right? So this uh, node has the input function, the, the function that you, let's suppose uh, for the pre-processing task, you want to prepare a function. So this is a node that it consists of a function and then it has an input. So you're going to specify the inputs to this particular function. So this functions can be, this, this particular inputs can be taken from the catalog YML. So you have to specify the name uh, here in the in the catalog and you have to uh, specify the what kind of data and the file path uh, where it is located. And you're going to also define the outputs for this particular function, which is pre-processed companies. You can see, you can see there is a, a pre-processed company in the catalog YML. So it is able to understand that, okay, the catalog is able to understand that, okay, this is a pre-processing function that it has to take companies, a data set as an input and output pre-processed companies, which is there in this catalog. And what is the type of data set that it has to save in? So it will save this in the parquet format and in which location it has to save in this location. So this is all being done internally. Uh, you, don't have to, you don't have to worry about the things like writing up your uh, uh, reading and writing operations and saving the model, uh, saving your files. Uh, this will be done internally, and this is what the best part that uh, catalog YML has uh, to do with the catalog. And then uh, you can also visualize your uh, uh, pipelines that you're gonna make it uh, once you once you develop all your pipelines, you set up a node and define your pipelines. Then you can also visualize how your flow is looking, and from here you can take up a steps uh, where you want to change your uh, definition. And you can also evaluate the uh, different different uh, nodes. Uh, with your own codes and you can also even check uh, each and every nodes how they are uh, and what is their input and output from the from the visualization dashboard and now next next is the Kedro plugin so <clears throat> Kedro has uh, flexibility with a lot of uh, other tools uh, you, you can also use mlflow with Kedro to try all your experiments and maintaining all of this model code uh, with with it and you can also uh, use a docker to prepare docker image for you you can also uh, do a kube flow. You can transfer all your uh, pipelines. Once you generate a pipeline, you can transfer all your uh, all your pipelines into kube flow. It will convert automatically. You can also use Apache Airflow uh, conversion DAX. So you can have once you have built a pipeline using uh, Kedro, you can just uh, export it as a Airflow DAX, and you can also export in uh, in, in some uh, vertex type pipelines also. And there are other integrations like uh, Great Expectation, so you can also validate or uh, your data set, or you can also uh, check your versioning of a data set. And then other integrations are like, like Neptune.ai for the experiment tracking and other steps. And then you can also integrate this Kedro with uh, Azure Machine Learning Environment and Amazon PageMaker. And there are further more plugins. Uh, you can also explore the documentation which mentioned in the slide. And uh, yeah, so this is the introduction part for Kedro and let's let's try to look into the demo part like how we can initialize this cadre environment in our our local setup so let me go back and it will look good like if you can uh, uh, start uh, like I, I will encourage you to start uh, doing that you can also perform the uh, coding side by side so that will help me or even help you to know the information or like how the cadre works so with that said uh, i have pasted a link for downloading the data and you can uh, git clone that particular repository so let me try to clone that particular repository in my local environment and let's try to uh, run the kedro so let me just go kedro demo and we'll save the repository okay. yes I have a small question. So it's kind mm -hmm. of similar to Qflow pipeline, but it has more functionalities because it can be connected with more, uh, you know, it can be connected with Amazon Sage Maker or anything, you know. So is that the functionality wise difference between this and Qflow okay. pipeline? So, right. Uh, Qflow, so if you want to write a Qflow pipeline, you have to learn Qflow first. So then you can write up your all your code. 
but uh, this scatter platform provides you a flexibility to export all your pipelines in any format you don't have to learn the queue flow you don't have to run the airflow lag or you don't have to learn any of the things but if you know cadro you can just uh, figure out your pipeline using the cadro normally using the python so cadro is just using the python to prepare a pipeline and then you can export your uh, all your pipelines in a cadro in any of the queue flow or any of the uh, pipeline that you're looking for or you know vertex a pipeline so that's the flexibility and that's the differentiation you have you can also prepare the pipeline in queue flow but unfortunately we have to learn the those things also and tomorrow if you want to go into airflow then you have to learn the airflow and then you could do it but with cadro you can uh, skip off those steps and you can directly move the code into production much quicker than uh deploying with other stuffs because there is also learning curve involved so this uh, this this demo will uh, will be something like we're going to use a, a pre built i have i have already built a notebook so from here from this notebook we're going to do we're going to, we're going to transition the steps to model uh, model preparation pipelines so from this notebook we are trying to build up a, a production level pipeline using cadro so these are these are common steps let me walk through it uh, these are the import of the files we we are trying to read up the data set and then i am trying to do some pre processing stuff here uh, just a normal pre processing stuff you can see there's a function pre processing and then i'm trying to split the data set into train and test and then i am going to train a model uh, and then i will evaluate the model so these are some basic steps uh, uh, general machine learning life cycle involves so let's translate this into a cadro pipeline and then uh, i will try to see how we can just use the cadro to uh, perform all of these steps uh, in this uh, single line of command and code let's build up a pipeline so for that first we need to install uh, we have to create a environment so let me just create a environment and let me type a cadro <clears throat> well you can also if you want you can also do the same stuff and um, it will help is what i can encourage you all right <laughs> it's better to practice and do it okay so can i activate cadro can be so i have this uh, conda environment created right and then i'm going to install you can install cadro to install all the dependencies of cadro So right now I'm solving all dependencies, and there are a few more dependencies I think I need to solve the scalar and the pandas and the numpy. So I will solve that in one line. I click learn right from pandas numpy. So here are dependencies I'm going to install it. right now you, you you can see there is no directory got created because i haven't created any of the projects from the cadro i just installed dependencies now i'm going to install now i'm going to create a, a project from the uh, cadro so once i install this cadro i will use cadro info to just confirm that the installation is is there in my uh, system or not so i can see that cadro is installed so let's now create a cadro uh, project so to create a cadro project you have to write a command cadro new so if you run this command it will ask you for the project name that you want to set up so let me set up a iris so i'm going to use iris so i set iris project and you can see once i did did that uh, you can see there the title got created iris project on this side and you can see there is a there are there are different directories which are there in it there is a con folder this is the project template that i that i talked about in the slide right you can see there are different folders that are created and the configuration files are created and there are some base and local environment uh and you can see the data directory has been created it has all the steps that are generally there you can also change these uh, names if you don't like and there are documents files in the notebooks and your source file in the source file you have to mention all of this code that you are trying to do it and then if you see a source file there is a iris project and there are pipeline folder so right now there is no pipeline i created because i haven't created any of the pipeline but you have just basic stuff going here so for that uh, so, so to create a pipeline uh, let's suppose i want to create a pipeline for data engineering to pre process the data set so i will write a command cadro uh, pipeline create data let's say engineering pipeline so i will once once i hit this command uh 
I think I should be there in the directory I this project and then only I can execute it. So I have to be there in this directory whatever the project I created. So with that I can create a, a new pipeline. So till now uh, you were not able to see any I mean, before this, before having I mean, running through this command, uh, we are not able to see any of the directories inside this pipeline. But now you can see a directory called Data Engineering Pipeline. So this pipeline has been created uh, based on this uh, command. And once you run this command, it will internally create a nodes.py file and the pipeline.py file. So here you have to mention all of your code, of your pre-processing steps, and you have to package that in a pipeline file. So let me bring up uh, the codes that we have in Jupyter Notebooks, right? to write up a, a pre-processing pipeline. So let me just copy up this. And then you have to go into the notes.py file that you created for the data engineering. Import all your, uh, all your functions that you created here. Right. So now you're trying to make a pre-processing pipeline uh, by using the, the same function that you have. And now let's also copy the train test split. So I want to keep this train test split in a data engineering pipeline. Okay, so now we have two processes to do it. And let me just uh, explain these processes. So this pre-processing function is taking an end data, which is called iris, and then it will do some pre-processing stuff, right? And this particular input of, sorry, this particular output of pre-processing X and Y will go into the split data set function to further split the data set into train and test. So the output will be uh, this, this particular four uh, data frames, right? Now, so this is the thing that we have to specify in uh, in a catalog yml uh, we have to specify the the input and like reading of the files and the saving of the files so if you go into the configuration folder and in the base environment you can find the parameters folder and then you can see catalog dot yml so in this you have to come and then you have to uh, write off your uh, uh, the input that you're going to take up so this is the iris data set uh, that is the input but you, you can see i am not writing any of the a p dot pd dot read underscore csv to row, to read the iris data set so i am going to use catalog dot yml to write and uh, to, to to use it as a reading operation for me to catalog will help me to read the operation for me so i'm going to write iris uh as, as a name and then i want to type a what is the type of this data so this is a pandas pandas dot PSV data set. I mean, you can also check all of this stuff on on Cadre site. Uh, they have which will I walk for you. And this is the type of data set that it will read and write also. So, and where is the location of this file? So, let me just locate this file. Uh, so we let me just yeah. You can see I have this data, uh, Iris data located in somewhere outside this project, right? So. Let me just uh, cut and paste it in the data folder that we have and in the raw directory. Let me paste it here. So now I have this uh, uh, iris data, which is there in the data folder. And then I want to take up this and then I will paste this path. So Kedro will know that, okay, this, this file has to be read from this particular path with a data set of type CSV. And then I will save this catalog.yml. And then I go into this uh, uh, nodes.py. So now Kedro will know that, okay, this is the iris. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is taking uh, the input as a function and will load it from the catalog. And the next thing is uh, the output is X and Y. You can save this output uh, if you want. Uh, so let's say if I want to save this output, uh, let's say it's an X, I want to save it. And there's a Y, I want to save it, right? So you can also write the type, it will be similar. So let me try to save it in a different format so that you can also understand. So let me go to the uh, site, uh, Kedro site. And I will write Kedro pickle data. So I, will, I would like to save this, uh, uh, this X and Y in a pickle format. So I'm just trying to explore the data set. So you can see there are multiple data sets that you can uh, load. You can also use uh, SQL BigQuery and you can import all the data set from BigQuery and all. So you can use this uh, Kedro functionality to do it. But I'm going to use this uh, type and file path to save all my X and Y variables in bigger format, right? So go back. 
and I will write it here. <coughs> just copy paste. Bigger than that, yes. And then again, the same thing I will do for the Y. So it is eventually uh, this particular thing will get save here. Get it save here in the model output. Okay, let me save. Let me make the directory to intermediate. Uh, it might be, I mean, it might be uh, for, for the first time, it might be uh, thinking of, it might be like, uh, very difficult to process all of this at, at, in one time, but trust me, it's very simple. You just have to play with the files and nothing else. Once you have the function prepared, uh, that character will take care of the things from your side. So now you can see that uh, I have taken this iris data set, it will take it from the cat, uh, catalog. Now I have also saved the output in X and Y. I am saving the output in this directory, which is which will be in the pickle format, right? Okay, so we have defined this for uh, reprocessing pipeline, and then let's go to the pipeline. We'll we'll come back to this SP data set again. We'll go to the pipeline dot pi file. Now we'll go into this, and from nodes, I have to import the functions, the functions, the preprocessing function that I use, right? So preprocessing, and let me also import the data set. Now I'm going to use this nodes that I created and I'm going to uh, order it in some sequential manner to run it as a pipeline. So I'm going to use a node uh, function, which is a Python function building inside the cadre. And inside this func uh, node function, we have parameters like func to, to pass your, your functions, like I am using the preprocessing functions. And then you have to pass an inputs for this particular functions and then output. So this is basically the same function that we just uh, saw here in nodes and now we have to specify in the pipeline so we can see that there is a way to specify the inputs and outputs right for this particular function that we saw so the input for this particular function is iris so and it is mentioned in the catalog so right so i'm going to specify the same name here in the function so let me try out this yes and then i have output for this preprocessing function is here in the catalog which is x and y so i'm going to take x and I'm going to append it as X and I also have a Y output, right? So I'm going to append it as a Y. So this is a, a function, uh, this, is a, this is a one node, this is a one task of the particular data engine pipeline and it will take an input as an uh, iris and it will outputting a two, two uh, data preprocessed functions that is uh, X and Y. And then uh, let's, go to, uh, let's go to the next function which is speed data and then this is the uh, this output of this previous function is an input for this particular speed data set, right? So now, uh, you can also uh, save, like we have already saved this X and Y. Uh, so I can also show you that how we can parameterize this uh, function set, like also the arguments that we are going to use. So for this, to parameterize uh, the arguments that you're going to use inside the function, you have a parameter.yml file here in the in the configuration base folder. You go into that and then uh, you can specify the parameters so for, for this particular function so let's say i have the split i'm going to write up this as a split variable and then i'm going to write it as test underscore underscore size as a parameter and then i also have a random state as a parameter so test size would be let's say by default i'm right now taking on i'm taking as a 42 as a random state now if we go back to the Split data set. We can read out. We can get rid of these parameters, and you can just write parents, and we can mention that it's a dictionary. So it will be taking up the inputs. For, it will this function will taking the inputs from the parameter that yml file, and then you have to specify the the which uh, parents uh, it should focus. So from parents file, you have to focus on the test variable, right? That was specified, and from here you can also parameterize your random state. Now, if you change your parameters uh, in this parameters.yml file, all the parameters will start changing and will all be parameterized. So you can play with your parameters from the parameters.yml file by this. So once you have this setup done, then you can also save this uh, output of X and Y till in X test. And that you can uh, eventually do it in the catalog.yml. You can also copy this and like if you want to save it, you can save it. Like let me just do it in, in a second. So 
Silva. Next train right. And then eventually we will have a white train. And then we'll have a next pick. And then white rest. And this will be saved in the let's save in the chain directory. And so these are the inputs and outputs. Uh, these are the files that we have to uh, play with. Uh, the catalog YML and the parameters for YML. So if you want to maintain your data or the reading and writing of data, you have to come up come up in all the in your catalog.yml. And if you have to parameterize your uh, uh, files uh, or your arguments, you can go to the parameter.yml. Okay. So now we have this uh, uh, catalog uh, data set ready. We have inputs and outputs specified, like the location that we want to save. Now we're going to go into the pipeline to define the uh, the next pipeline uh, that we have, right? So the next pipeline is to specify the split data set. So after the processing, we cannot do a split data set. So let me like, copy the code that we already have in the node and then let's paste the split data set. Hopefully it is very clear, right, at this point. And the inputs are nothing but the output of the previous function. So outputs are like x and y of previous function which are coming from this and the uh, output for this is the x and y test variable right so let me just do this right and let me just write it in a there's one more out input to this uh key data set there is the parameter that you have to pass in so instead of x and y you have to also specify the parents because in the split data set, we mentioned the parents. So that is also an input. So in this split person file, you have to mention the parents. So it is something like this. And you have to mention which parents you want to take up from here. So it's like split parents. So it, we are going to go into the parameter environment and we'll take up the name and you have to specify the name of the parent uh, parents. And that's it. And that's the input to the this particular function, right? Okay. So this pipeline is ready. The data engine pipeline is ready. Uh, hopefully, it should run very easily. Let me save up all the things. So, Correct. let me just run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We need to wrap in another five minutes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, maybe this, this pipeline will be helping to build up. Right? So, this is the pipeline, uh, our data engine pipeline. And then we're we'll, going to run the KDRAW run to run all of the pipeline. I think there is some uh, issues uh, that I I think I made a mistake here in the putting up a comma. Let me rerun and re run this. So once I run Pedro run, uh, it should hopefully should not throw any kind of uh, error and should process very easily. Slow for my system, maybe it shouldn't be for your system uh, because there are multiple things that I'm running in parallel. So, this is just gonna uh, run your data engineering pipeline and it's gonna save all of your dependencies that are looking into the folder that you specified in the catalog. You can see all of this, uh, it has loaded a data set from Iris uh, folder, it's saved into the X, Y, and it has used the parameters and Split the data set, data set into the train test and split. If you go into the folder that you mentioned uh, to save it, if you go into direct uh, intermediate folder, you can see there's a test train split. So likewise, uh, you can uh, you do since we have uh, time crunch, uh, we can also train the model uh, from this. So let's suppose if you want to continue from here, you can also so this data engine pipeline is ready. You have got your pre-processing data set. You save it in a uh, in a train test split now from here you, you want to train a model right so what you can do is you can again uh, create a pedro pipeline and you can write your your let's say training uh, pipeline you can create a training pipeline and then it, it will eventually create a uh, training uh, a pipeline inside the uh, source folder if you go into source folder you can see the pipelines and you can see data engine pipeline that you wrote and now we have training pipeline the same the training pipeline we have the same nodes and pipeline so now you have to mention all of your uh, training codes uh, from your uh, from notebooks and you have to specify in the notes.py file and the pipeline file and you have to run this symbol. 
so yeah so that's it uh, that we have like due to crunch, crunch uh, time crunch i am not able to explain it for the training but from here i can explain you uh, one more thing like we can visualize the things uh which is uh, we can use pip get draw which to install the visualization uh, thing okay let's call pip install So from here you can visualize all the data pipelines that you prepared for your training and as well as for training uh, for your data engineering, uh, and you can also package all of your of all of your things in Docker. So we get installed, and I will like also install the Docker 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 so that I could just show you the things. Taking little time. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can just uh, do. It. I can do it parallelly. If you if you have any questions. So, uh, Karan, one thing. So, how it is different from uh, Selden Core and ZenML? It's kind of similar thing. They are also doing that. Right. Uh, uh, ZenML is also a part of. Uh, I mean, they they are also in the ML ops domain. So. You can consider just a, I mean, a different uh, substitute for the schedule, but uh, they all in the same platform. You can all, you can use ZenML also, uh, but I preferred uh, the schedule because it has uh, much better functionality and good code read uh, readability, and it's all standardized, uh, industrial standardized and followed. So hence, uh, schedule is uh, is my preferred way. But uh, many other things are a good part of schedule and many other good parts of ZenML. So there are always a differentiation. But we are all belong to the same, uh, same domain, same same part of it, ML Ops too. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I am trying to visualize the pipeline, so you can see. I have prepared the Iris dataset. Now we we are visualizing the pipeline uh, that we created. You can see I have created the Iris dataset. We are doing pre processing X Y. We are going to save it and then split it and train and test. So this is how the Kedro visualization will help you. And if you want to explore more of your pipeline, you can click on that and you can explore lots of the outputs and inputs. This is the uh, things that you can do with the visualization. You can visualize your pipeline, Kedro pipeline. And then let's suppose uh, just one more functionality that I want to explore it here is uh, let me install Kedro underscore Docker. That is the most I think. I think I misspelled it. Now let me just write a Docker file for it by using it. So kdro Docker. I have to just write Docker in it. So if I write that, now you can see uh, in the project directory you can see there's a Docker file available. This Docker file got created, and then if you want to build a Docker image out of this, you can write kdro Docker build. Again, I misspelled it. Let me read. Yeah. Okay. Now it's going to take up this Docker file that you got generated, and it will uh, package all your data engineering pipeline that we prepared in a Docker file. You can see, and I'm just getting prepared. Uh, so, likewise, you can do it. Uh, the Docker preparation, you can generate Docker file. And that's how easy it becomes to 